Now, just a little warning before I get into it, but there are going to be some major spoilers ahead for the fourth episode of The Acolyte, so if you don't want anything ruined, it is a really good time to click away. Alright, so like I did last week with the third episode, this video is not going to be my full-on deep dive into the episode video where I discuss it scene by scene. Many seem to kind of enjoy me doing that last week, so I will be doing it again, and that video will be up tomorrow. Instead, this is going to be a, more of a reaction to what I just saw video, and part discussion about the more interesting or controversial parts of this episode, the stuff I think people really want to talk about right away. And boy, were there ever some uh, controversial things in this episode. I mean, I had heard, thanks to some reviewers getting to see the first four episodes early, I'd heard that the third episode was going to be this sort of a break the canon, if not break, Star Wars itself episode. And though, yeah, the mystery of how Osha and Mei were created certainly, uh, certainly has its issues, or potentially does depending on just how it exactly happened, which we weren't really told. That was left all very, very vague, and apparently intentionally so. Leslie Headland recently said that we were going to get some different perspectives on what had happened or how the twins were made, and that we would have to come to our own conclusions about it. But anyway, not worrying about all that right now. In this episode, the fourth episode, titled Day, as was sort of alluded to in some of the trailers, but we see multiple Jedi, including some red shirts that'll probably be killed next week, but we see multiple Jedi flat out encounter a Sith. There's pretty much no other way to put it or look at it, no other way to describe what this guy was that the Jedi have encountered, nothing else they would even potentially think of him as, I would argue, keeping in mind when Qui-Gon Jinn would one day encounter Darth Maul a hundred years after this, he would immediately be convinced that this had to be a Sith Lord. And I mean, this Sith, as far as we have seen thus far, the episode did just kind of end abruptly as the impending battle between the Jedi and the Sith was about to begin, probably thinking this was the best way to get people to tune in next week. But this Sith shows no fear about going against a half dozen or more Jedi, and he even kind of flicks Osha aside before he then force pushes all the Jedi, and he does it with one big giant blast, like we had seen in those aforementioned trailers. And I'm just assuming that the Sith is indeed a he, considering that is what the Sith gets referred to as in the show by, well, by characters that should know him or that do know him, but aren't entirely sure of his identity. And actually, I think in the end, it will be revealed that it is a she. I think that it being called a he is part of the deception, actually. Either way, I will keep referring to the Sith as a he, even though I actually think it is almost certainly going to be a she. I have a suspect that I think is the only suspect that makes sense, even though this episode, and the previous one as well, or the second episode, kind of hinted at or alluded to somebody as well, that being Quamar, the apothecary guy that helped make the poison for May. But that almost seems way too obvious that it is him. And so I can't help but feel like it's actually not going to be him, or they're trying to kind of do a double fake out where you think it has to be him, and thus you don't think it's him, and then, yeah, it does turn out to be him, if that makes sense. But anyway, no, I do not think it is him. I think this is all one big giant misdirection because this show can't do anything anywhere near approaching subtlety. It either spells things out for you very bluntly so that you can't mistake them, or it is so extremely vague that you can't hope to make sense of it, which is probably done for the sake of calling this a mystery. There's just no in between those two extremes with pretty much anything that goes on in the show. And I mean, how would there be time for good, well-paced storytelling with solid character development that makes you actually care about them when this episode clocked in at under 30 minutes long when you take out the opening and closing credits and all that? There's just no time for good, interesting setup and satisfying payoff when it feels like the episode ends before it even has a chance to really get going. And yet, despite how short it was, I still found myself rather bored by it because, again, I feel like it's been so intentionally vague that I'm not interested in the mystery it wants me to be interested in. It really hasn't given me a reason to care. Again, it's being so vague with so many different things that I'm not finding myself curious as much as I'm just finding myself frustrated that I feel like I'm intentionally being misled and deceived by so many things simply because it's just not being clear at all. That's not clever, that's just bad execution. That's just a bad execution of a mystery when you are just intentionally not telling us anything at all to make us have to guess what's going on with no or very little information to even come up with solid theories. And I mean, that's part of the fun of watching a mystery, right? Trying to figure it out. 
But if you are literally given no or so few pieces of the puzzle that you can't even hope to put the puzzle together, then you don't get vested in trying to figure out the mystery, you just get frustrated because you know they are intentionally just keeping so much from you to keep the mystery going. But anyway, I'm sure I will talk more about that or explain why I feel that way in tomorrow's Deeper Dive video. And so for now, let's get back to the Sith. And going into this series before it ever started, one of my concerns, especially after seeing that aforementioned trailer again, where it seemed like the Jedi were indeed going to encounter a Sith, where they were uh, going to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Darth Smiley, but I was worried this would make the Jedi look like complete fools because they had completely missed a clear sign of the Sith's return a hundred years before the prequels and before Palpatine came along and defeated them. We even have ki -Adi mundis famous line from The Phantom Menace about how the Sith have been extinct for a millennium, a line that no other Jedi in the council chambers at that time counters. We even have Mace Windu sort of backing him up, saying, I do not think the Sith could have returned without us knowing. And I had heard some say that, well, maybe Kiati Mundi and apparently the other council members too, that they didn't know about the incident from a hundred years ago with the Sith, or they didn't think of it as a Sith, they thought of it as something else. And so maybe, just maybe, it was something a little smaller scale than what the trailer implied it would be. Maybe all the Jedi that encountered the Sith would, I don't know, die or something. That was a theory some people had. And the uh, rest of the Jedi Order wouldn't find out what had ever happened to them or investigate it all too thoroughly and find out that there were traces of the Sith or whatever. Or maybe they did discover it was a Sith, but for some reason it was kept a secret even from council members, especially council members in the future or during the prequels. They just never had heard about this because it had been kept on the down low. That maybe Yoda knew about it and once Darth Maul had revealed himself, he then tells Windu that, hey, there was this incident from a hundred years ago and that's how they both knew about the rule of two. In other words, sure, yes, there was a chance that the show would maybe find a way to explain or sort of bypass that line from Kiati Mundi and make it all make sense in a way that hopefully didn't imply the Jedi were fools or that they did something underhanded. There could be some sort of explanation as to why he said the Sith had been extinct for a millennium and no one else on the council sat up and said, well, actually there was this incident from a hundred years ago that we had with a Sith that maybe you know, might be relevant to what's going on now. Basically, it could have been that Ki Adi Mundi was simply mistaken or not fully informed or something along those lines. The whole council wasn't fully informed, even though even that, I'd argue, wouldn't make a ton of sense or would again make the Jedi just seem like they tried to bury the secret of the return of the Sith for reasons. But maybe it was something like that. Maybe it could be explained and work. After all, it's not like Kiati Mundi had been alive a hundred years ago or at this point in time or in this show and that he would be a member of the Jedi Order even. It's not like he was there, right? Right? Well, it turns out he is alive and a member of the Jedi Order at this time. Kiati Mundi is a member of the Jedi in this show. They even changed or retconned his age to get him in here. And yes, it is 100% him. His name is even in the credits. And not only that, but of the thousands upon thousands of Jedi alive and a part of the Order at this particular time, he is one of a handful that was in a, a little briefing about May that discusses who could have possibly trained her. And the idea is even put out there that it was some sort of offshoot, though they don't explain an offshoot of what exactly. We can make some guesses. It is also suggested it could possibly be something maybe worse. And gee, I wonder what something worse could ever be. Could they be referring to, oh, I don't know, the Sith? And honestly here, I cannot believe they did this. I cannot believe that instead of trying to, again, somehow find a way to make it make sense, to make sense of what Kiati Mundi said in The Phantom Menace, that instead of doing that, they just intentionally run headfirst into it and make it worse. I cannot help but feel like this is almost their way of laughing at those of us who care about the canon. I mean, why else would you do something like this? Why else would you put him in there? The guy who said the Sith have been extinct for a millennium. Why have him be part of the investigation that reveals that there are Sith a hundred years ago? And yes, I know we've got four episodes to go and uh, maybe somehow it'll all be explained in a way that makes sense. Though what we or the Jedi on scene, what they've already seen of this Sith, what they've seen him do, is extremely impressive. It is an impressive use of the Force, and I don't know how they won't come to the conclusion that this is some sort of Sith. 
And I mean, right now, their theory going into the episode, really, or at the beginning, is that they want to believe it is a Jedi, a renegade Jedi, I suppose, that has somehow trained Mei and is responsible for all of this. But again, that is before any of them come into contact with this Sith and see what he can do. And so if they either, A, learn the identity of the Sith and find out it is not a former Jedi, or B, never learn the identity of the Sith, he's either killed without it being revealed somehow, or C, and this would be the worst possible solution, but the Sith lives and gets away, which means he can now go on to train others. And if any of those three are the case, then how in the hell can the Jedi be so surprised by the Sith's return in a hundred years? How could Ki Adimundi, who is alive and there and part of the investigation, say what he did all those years later about the Sith having been extinct for a millennium? And right now, and maybe this will be part of the uh, cover-up or something, part of the mystery, you could say, but they're not letting the Jedi Council know what's going on. They are keeping it from them. There is a rogue dark side user on the loose who's trained at least one student and potentially more, and they're just going to keep the whole thing secret from the Council because they're afraid, or Venestra Rowe is afraid, that if the Council finds out about this, they'll be obliged to tell the Senate and it'll make the Jedi look bad. And so the only possible way I could see to salvage any of this at this point, to make any sense of this, not that I think it'll be good, but Venestra Rowe must be the Sith, must be the secret master. That is the only way I could see this working in any way, shape, or form. That she somehow got there first to Kelnaka first, who is the Jedi Wookiee who turns up dead in this episode. But the Jedi were going to find him to warn him that Mei was coming after him to kill him. But she, Venestra, got there first. She is the one who sent them there and knew where they were going. She got there first because she didn't want him talking about what had actually happened with the fire all those years ago or something like that. And that's because she was there and responsible for all of it. She was there 16 years ago investigating the twins for her master because she is the Sith Apprentice. And the others she has now, like May, are, as the show says, or what the name of it even is, they are acolytes. And she is the apprentice looking for an apprentice of her own to finally take out the master. And that's why, again, she is interested in the twins and was all those years ago. Because she thinks one of them can be her apprentice and help her, again, kill the master. And you might be wondering how that makes any sense. And I'm not entirely sure it even does, but that is where my line of thinking is right now. I don't see how it could be anyone else that we've seen or has been introduced thus far. I don't see how it could be anyone else besides Vanestra Rowe. And I will try to go more into why I feel that way in my more in-depth video tomorrow, where I discuss the episode again in greater length and get into some of the other things besides the Sith and all that. But for now, that is going to be all I got for you this time. Now it is your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you thought of this episode or what you think about Kiati Mundi being alive at this time and in the episode and investigating the Sith. Do you think this will ultimately somehow make sense or is this really just them kind of not giving a damn and almost even laughing at us that we do? Whatever the case may be, whatever you think, leave a comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.